which it is the second Delta printer. In this video I would therefore like to point out some of the special features of the Delta mechanics. It is obvious that the printer due to its design is quite high at 101cm including the filament spool, but with a triangular base of 46cm edge length it occupies not much space on your workbench. The QQS Pro is delivered largely pre-assembled, but the rest to be done isn't as straightforward as with conventional printers. However, anyone who has already gained some experience with 3D printers will get it up and running quickly. The pictures I took during the assembly and close-ups of the assembled device are available on my website, which could be helpful if you stumble over one or another detail on the build process. Before the assembly, I took a closer look at what is inside the socket. The power supply delivers an output voltage of 24V at up to 15A, which corresponds to an electric output of 360W. According to the printer menu, the main board identifies itself to be a MKS Robin mini board, and the microprocessor type STM32F runs the Marlin firmware. The stepper motor drivers are plugged into sockets and can therefore be quickly replaced if necessary, that's how I like it. The three stepper motors moving the printhead are also located in the socket. The coated glass plate is glued to the heated print bed, so it cannot be removed. I had the printer fully assembled in about one hour. The whole printer mechanics is quite solid, but not completely free of torsion. You have to keep in mind that this is a fairly cheap delta printer and from that point of view the rigidity of the frame is ok. The print head of the QQS Pro is mounted on 6 push rods. Two of these push rods each lead to the three edges of the frame. On each of these edges there are two parallel rods with a diameter of 8mm. Breast bushings are used to guide the movement along these rods. The rods are straight, the illusion of a curve is only created by my camera's wide angle lens. The printhead is driven via timing belts. With knurled nuts, the belt tension can be conveniently adjusted on the pulleys at the top of the frame. Once that's done, the mechanics runs pretty smoothly. The push rods are connected to the linear guides on the one... ...and to the printhead on the other ends. Two parallel push rods per edge are used to prevent the printhead from twisting. The system is not completely free of backlash and torsion, but once more, keep the low price in mind. In contrast to conventional printers, the limit switches of a delta printer are located at the top of the frame. With that, the printhead moves up if the homing process is triggered. All three stepper motors start rotating simultaneously and as soon as the limit switch is reached, only the motor in question is stopped until all three limit switches are finally reached. The QQS Pro has a sensor for auto leveling the print bed. This is a mechanical switch... ...which must be attached to the print head via a magnet before starting the procedure. Furthermore, the cable must be connected to the socket on the printhead. Once that is done, the auto level process can be started. First, three point at the edges of the printer are measured. Once that's done, a grid made up of a total of 21 points on the print bed is used to detect the flatness of the glass plate. The sensor switch must then be removed again... ...so that the set height can be adjusted. 
This is done by moving the printhead in Z direction via the touchscreen in such a way that nothing but a sheet of paper fits tightly between nozzle and print bed. Don't forget to store the value in the EEPROM afterwards, which completes the procedure. A special feature of Delta printers is that the printable error is not a rectangle as with conventional Cartesian printers, but a circle. With the QQS Pro the diameter of the printable area is 25.5cm, the maximum height of the prints is 36cm. The big advantage of the Delta mechanism is that the print bed is not moved. Instead, only the relatively small mass of the print head is driven around. The heavy print bed and the objects to be printed always remain in place. Since only a small mass has to be moved, the stepper motors can be controlled with high acceleration. Another advantage is that two or even all three motors work at the same time to move the print head in one direction. Following the rule, together we are stronger. But again, physics cannot be overwritten. As already mentioned, the QQS Pro is an inexpensive printer, which is why the mechanics doesn't set too high limits to your speed madness. A Bowden extruder is installed and the stepper motor pushes the filament towards the hot end with a gear reduction of 3 to 1. The heavy stepper motor is located on top of the frame and therefore does not have to be moved when printing. The print bed heating reaches the maximum temperature of 110 degrees Celsius specified by the manufacturer after 10 minutes, whereby the ambition temperature at the time of the measurement was 16 degrees Celsius. Time for a first print which can be started quickly via the well responsive 3.2 inch touchscreen. My default setting for the first layer is 0.35mm and to give the plastic enough time to stick to the print bed, the print speed is only 15mm per second. Adhesion to the coated glass plate of the print bed is good. The small thin structure does not come off anywhere, I do not use any adhesive agents. The following layers are printed with a layer height of 0.2mm. The material I use is PETG. The print bed is set to 90 degrees Celsius, the hot end to 240 degrees Celsius. I have increased the print speed to 40 mm per second after the first layer. The extrusion width is set to 0.7 mm. With these settings, the print is finished after 9 minutes. I need several of these clamps, so I increased the print speed from part to part. Here it is set to 60mm per second... ...and here to 80mm per second, the settings for layer height and extrusion width remain the same. However, I should have switched on the part cooling fan from the beginning as can be seen here on the bottom right. Next part is printed with 100mm per second and the cooling fan turned on from the beginning. And finally 120mm per second is the speed setting in Slicer. It can be seen that printing is not done with 120mm per second at all time. The firmware calculates with acceleration values which means that the maximum speed is only reached in the middle of the large arc. Nevertheless, the printing time is more than halved to only about 4 minutes. The extruder motor has no trouble pushing the filament through the hot end at the required speed. The large gear wheel shows that the extrusion speed is also accelerated and decelerated according to the movement of the print head. A direct comparison of the two parts printed at 40 and 120mm per second shows that vertical lines appear on the clamp that is printed faster. As already mentioned, the mechanics is not completely free of backlash and also not 100% inflexible. 
The remaining clamps are printed in one pass. The maximum speed is set to 80mm per second. All of the clamps distributed on the print bed stick well. The automatic leveling obviously works fine. The clamps are used to keep the limit switch wires away from the moving parts. An improvement that will surely pay dividends in the long term. The next test print is the obligatory Banshee. The material used is the small spool of white PLA that came with the printer. The maximum print speed is rather small at 40mm per second but makes the print more comparable to previous tests of other printers. As always, there are high resolution photos of the bench here on my website so that you can get your own impression of what quality this printer delivers. Next material to be printed is ABS. It is a simple box with a base area of 100x50mm. The base plate is 2mm thick. The walls which are also 2mm thick are printed on top of the base plate. ABS shrinks noticeable as it cools, causing the print to warp. You can see that the corners detach from the glass plate as soon as a height of about 10mm is reached. Later on a horizontal crack formed, making the print completely unusable. Materials such as ABS which tend to warp should be processed in the highest possible ambition temperature. The frame of the QQS Pro can be covered very easily, which significantly increases the ambition temperature at the inside. For a quick test I cut three sheets of 2.5mm plexiglass and mounted them on the frame with tape. In my video studio, which is only around 14 degrees Celsius cold, the temperature of the plexiglass cover is between 30 and 40 degrees Celsius at the outside. The wavelength the infrared thermometer uses for measurement cannot penetrate the plexiglass. The built space is warmed up by the bed heater and to a very small extent by the hot end. In addition to the triangular frame it is very advantageous that all electronic components of the delta printer are outside the heated chamber, including the stepper motors for driving the printhead which are located in the cold base. The QQS Pro does not really take up any more space on your workbench with the plexiglass cover. The extruder motor at the top of the frame can also be mounted outside the heated zone with just little effort. Only the mounting bracket has to be rotated by 180 degrees. The fact that the print bait is not moved on a delta printer has another advantage when printing ABS. With the moving print bed, air flows around the workpiece and thus cools it, which increases warping. With a stationary print bed, an isolating air bubble can form around the walls of the workpiece. There's less warping and no cracks form, the box is printed successfully. The FL Sun QQS Pro is certainly not the most suitable printer for beginners in 3D printing, as there are a few special features to be considered. However, if you have some experience in tinkering, you won't be faced with any unsolvable problems and you will quickly have a ready to use 3D printer. If you want to get in contact with the somehow still exotic world of Delta printers, you can do so with the QQS Pro without having to break the bank. If you keep the relatively low price tag in mind and if you don't screw your expectations too high, you will acquire a 3D printer that delivers decent results at a decent print speed. The auto level function makes operating the printer very easy and convenient. Working with this Delta printer is no rocket science. The option of being able to create a heated belt chamber on the Jeep opens up new possibilities for experimentation with the QQS Pro and that's exactly what I like. As always, there are high resolution photos of the FL Sun QQS Pro and the prints made in this video on my website, have a click.
Thanks for watching and I'll be back.